All right, you guys, I'm so stoked. I just got the Roland SEO2 analog synth. This thing is so awesome. It's so compact. It's super cool. But what I discovered is that you can send MIDI CCs back to Ableton and out of Ableton into the SEO2 in this beautiful, awesome, feedbacky, super cool way that allows you to use Ableton Sequencer to really bring out um, some special features out of the SEO2. So that's coming up right after this. All right, so the first thing you want to do is make sure that you've gone ahead and downloaded the latest uh, driver for your system. So if you got, I mean, make sure you, you pay close, close attention here. If you don't have an updated uh, OS X version or Windows, just make sure you get the right one for your system. And then once that's done, you should be able to go into Ableton's preferences and see that the input for SEO2 and output SEO2 show up down here in the MIDI ports. What you need to make sure that you do is turn on the uh, track and remote switch for both the inputs and outputs to make this uh, little system work. Okay? Now on the SEO2, in order to get it to send CC data, you have to switch the unit off, hold the exit button as you switch it back on, and you'll see that it shows you the latest firmware that it's got. If you hit this number 5, this is where you turn on the CC messages being sent from the SEO2 back to the computer, and by default, You'll notice that probably when you did this, it's it's off. So you switch it to on, or you switch it to USB, and then uh, click in the value encoder. Okay, and now the SEO2 should be sending uh, MIDI data back to Ableton Live. And so the way we can check is I'm going to wiggle a knob here, and as you can see up in this corner, Ableton is in fact receiving something from something. <laughs> That's what this little light shows you. It's receiving MIDI from somewhere. All right, so that means that the SEO2 is in fact sending uh, MIDI back to Ableton Live. So in Live I have a track here and this track is receiving input from all ins and the MIDI out is going to the SEO2. You just click on MIDI 2, SEO2 and by default your SEO2 should be on, on channel 1. Okay. I also have a drum rack here uh, with a drum beat I've, I've already made on it um, so that we can just keep time when we record and then the audio coming back from the SEO2. So let's go ahead and listen to this drum beat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to record a lick uh, from, I'm using an Ableton push just so you know, but you could, you could use the MIDI keyboard, you could just uh, click and write notes in here, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to go ahead and record a riff. So I've got my little riff here. I'm going to go ahead and quantize it just for fun. So this is where all the magic happens. If you turn on this session record button, and the strategy is that I've noticed over time is to turn it on while you're recording and then turn it off when you're done. Um, that way you won't have anything rewrite itself. What will happen is, is I can send these CCs to Ableton, and Ableton will send the CCs back to the SEO2, and they correlate to the exact controls that you're using. Um, I think a better way to describe this is just to show you, um, instead of trying to explain, but, but I'll just go ahead and give it a shot. What's happening is the same CC that tells the cutoff to move, if you're sending CCs to the SEO2, is the very knob that, that sends it to live. Okay? So let's. I'm just going to go ahead and show you, and, and you'll get a better idea. So I'm going to start recording uh, the second pass-through. I'm going to start recording uh, these parameters. All right, so I'm going to start recording now. Now you can see, let's go ahead and take a look at it. You can see the automation lines recorded in live. So now you can just go hog wild with all these different things you want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and record uh, the LFO amount. On this next pass, here we go. Super powerful stuff. 